Which evidence do we have? Yeah, okay.
All right. Are we ready for the jury then? Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, your next witness. Okay. Officer Gatlin. Can you just spell the last name for me and for the court reporter? G A T L I N. Okay, thank you. Name and business address for the record. William Gatlin. Uh, business address 251 East 6th Street in Los Angeles, California, uh, 90014. How long have you been an officer with the LAPD? About eight years. And what is your rank? Uh, police officer two. Now, your partner on May 21, 2016 was Officer Diener, is that correct? Yes. You were wearing your body cam on yep. May 21, 2016? Yes. When were you first assigned body cams? Um, sometime in 2015, I think. Uh, you know, I don't remember. Uh, so, Gatlin, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 6. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go down to the second page. And this is the incident recall for the two, for you and Officer Diener for May 21, 2016, in connection with the call at the Eastern Columbia Building, 849 South Broadway. Now, Officer Diener indicated that he believed that he was driving that night. Is that your recollection as well? Uh, yes. When Officer Diener is driving, what does that mean you're doing? Uh, it means I handle uh, the computer. Based on the incident recall, when did you arrive at the scene, you and Officer Dean? We arrived at the scene, it looks like at 2224. And that is 1024? Correct. So when you arrived, do you recall whether there were any other police officers <laughs> that were on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any press on the scene? I do not believe there was. Do you recall whether there was any type of public gathering at all? No. Okay. Was it relatively quiet? Uh, from my recollection, yes. Uh, did you see very many people in the lobby when you came through? Not that I remember. Okay. Um, and then tell me what you recall of this incident once you got there and you were shown to the elevator? Um, I remember we went up the elevator, um, exited the elevator, walked down the hallway until we found the unit number, uh, knocked on the door, a male answered the door. And uh, at that point, I mean, at that point, I, I really didn't know whether this guy is potentially the suspect, if this guy is involved in the altercation or who this guy was. So we kind of talked to him for a second and he advised us that the police had already been there. He had a business card from them. And we told him that we uh, still needed to step inside to check on the subject or potential victim just to make sure that she's okay and that this is uh, indeed related to the previous incident and not a new incident where the suspect had uh, potentially return and cause uh, there's another new issue at hand. 
So do you recall that you already knew that this had this place had there that another officer had had uh, answered the call or other officers had answered the call before you got there? Yes, I already knew there was a previous caller. And how did you know that? Um, just kind of keeping track when you're on the computer, you kind of are able to keep track of the calls throughout the night and where they're at and what's going on. And did you know that Officer Signs and, and Haddon had been the ones who had answered the call earlier? Mm, I, I believe so. Okay. Um, did you speak with Officer Signs or Officer Haddon before you went to the Eastern Columbia building? No. I'm going to take you down to the same exhibit. The page that's uh, Bates stamp numbered LAPD 11. And I'm going to ask you, this is a TOMSG data log. Do you recognize this document? Uh, I've never seen this before. I've never seen one of these documents before. All right. Do you have a recollection of receiving an administrative message at 222230, which would be 102230, uh, saying, uh, incident 4756 is the same incident as yours. 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response. Uh, I did not recall. I do not recall getting that message. Right below it at 222322, which is 1023 and change, um, it shows that your unit responded with Rog, in other words, Roger to that message. Do you see that? Yes. Would that have been you that did that or would that have been Officer Dean? Uh, probably me. Okay. And, and is that because you weren't driving and Officer Dean was? Yes. Okay. So does this refresh your recollection of what had been communicated to you and why you knew that someone had already answered this call earlier? Uh, yes. Are you familiar with the term cycle of violence? Yes. Well, typically, do you make arrests on domestic abuse calls? Um, you know, sometimes we do, and sometimes the other party is no longer at scene, and we would just take a report. Okay. Are there times where they just refuse to cooperate and you just left? Um, yeah, but yeah, there are times like that. You were going to say, but what? I, I guess like the totality of the circumstance based on just because someone's uncooperative doesn't automatically mean that we'll just leave. You know, if we're, you know, observe some kind of injuries or if there's a third party witness that's cooperative that could lean in where even if the victim's uncooperative, that we would still take some sort of action. Now I'm going to ask you to turn to number page 13 here. And this is the CAD summary report. What if any uh, involvement did you have in this? Um, so uh, I would be the one that kind of closes out the incidents on the computer. So the uh, writings over to the right of the screen would be the how I would what I would type into the computer to close out the call. And so you would have typed in related to previous incident verbal argument only checked residence. Yes. Who told you that it was a verbal argument only? Uh, based on uh, the knowledge I had of the previous call, I'm able to see potentially how they closed out the call. And I could have seen it from there. So you could have gotten this from A1A. Uh, 1A1. 1A1, yeah, their report. Officer Science and Officer Haddon and then just repeated it here? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you have any recollection of anyone in the apartment up in Penthouse 3 saying that there had been a verbal argument only? Um, not to my recollection. Now let me just jump back to the events of uh, May 21 for a moment. Were you aware that that was the apartment of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? No. 
When did you first become aware of that? Uh, mm, I don't remember. Are we talking, talking months, days, hours? I think it was a couple days. And do you remember how you learned of it? Mm, no, I don't. And did you know who Johnny Depp was at that time? Uh, yeah. And were you a fan of Johnny Depp's as of May 21, 2016? Um, I guess I liked a couple of his movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like rushing out to go see him or anything. I don't know. Are you a fan of Johnny Depp's today? I can remember the last movie I saw of his. Did you know who Amber Heard was as of May 21, 2016? Uh, I was aware that there was an actress by the name of Amber Heard, but I not, was not totally familiar with her or any of her, any of her work. When you saw the name Amber Heard on the uh, incident recalls, did it register with you that she was an actress? No. Did you recognize Amber Heard when you came to the apartment? on May 21, 2016? No. How close did you come to Amber Heard while you were in your apartment? Um, I'd have to say probably between 10 and 15 feet. And what was the lighting like where Amber Heard was sitting? It's pretty uh, dim. Did you ask to see Amber Heard's face in the light? No. Did you ask Amber Heard whether she had any injuries? No. Did you interview any of the persons present about what had taken place earlier that night? No. Why not? Uh, because uh, I was aware that there's a previous call regarding the incident and the mail to answer the door uh, kind of made it clear to us that this is still left over from that same incident and a new incident had not occurred. So I didn't feel the need to at that time. Did you go through and search the entire apartment, including bedrooms, offices, and other areas? No. Again, why not? Uh, so same as I explained earlier, and they were all adamant that uh, her husband was no longer at scene. Did you go into any of the other adjoining apartments? No. You asked where the husband was. Why did you ask where the husband was? Uh, because in the comments of the call, it stated the uh, husband and wife were arguing. Okay. And, and it was also a domestic violence. Uh, yeah, it's a domestic violence call, and it wouldn't be uncommon for, you know, the male to answer the door to tell us that he's not the husband, and later it turns out that he is. So, you know, we kind of have to talk to the other party involved to make sure that that's not the male that's involved in the uh, argument. Did any of the four people that were in the apartment identify Johnny Depp as that male? No. Was there any effort by any of the people in that apartment to get you to press charges or investigate further? No. Would you say the people were reluctant to even have you come into the apartment? It felt that way. And what happened? What occurred that made it feel like that to you? That they didn't want to be in the, They didn't want you in the apartment. Um, just the uh, the way that the uh, male was acting to answer the door. And he kind of just said, "Oh, let me just go grab the business card from the previous call." And then even so, when we uh, had went inside, uh, it didn't seem like anybody was particularly eager to talk to us. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Exhibit 1, Defendant's Exhibit 1. <clears throat> and this is uh, the Daily Mail, Mail Online, July 3rd, 2020. And I'm going to go down to the 10th page. What, if any, evidence did you observe when you went to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, that Amber Heard and her friends were attempting to concoct an abuse hoax to set up Johnny Depp? 
to be accused of domestic violence? None that I can recall. Uh, what, if any, evidence did you see of Amber and her friends spilling wine and roughing the place up? None. And what, if any, evidence did you see that Amber and her friends were had concocted and gotten their story straight and were relaying them to you when you arrived? None. Did Amber or her friends at any time while you were at the apartment on May 21, 2016, claim that Johnny Depp had committed domestic violence of Amber? Not to me, they didn't. Did you see them do that to Officer Diener? No. What, if any, efforts did Amber Heard make to come over and to show you any evidence of injuries? None. And what, if any, effort did Amber Heard or her friends make to try to show you any type of property damage? None. And what, if any, evidence do you have that Amber or her friends made placed a second call to 911? I don't have any evidence that it was one of her friends. I just know that there was a second call placed. Well, actually, if I can recall, I think it said that uh, her friend was on the phone with her and her arguing with her husband. Who said that? I believe that's what the incident recall said. Did you ever provide a sworn deposition uh, saying that you saw no evidence of a crime at the penthouse before today? No. Did, are you aware of whether Officer Dean uh, provided a sworn deposition saying he saw no evidence of a crime? He has not. Uh, and now this uh, call came in at 2030, which is approximately 8.30 uh, regular time, p.m., right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then a little bit further down, just seven minutes later, comes a duplicate call that appears to come from the New York Police Department. So yes. there's roughly seven minutes of each other, correct? Yes. Did you see that when you were looking back and trying to look at the history? Uh, I believe I saw all of this. Did you see in any of the incident recalls or any of the documentation that you reviewed that there, the officers, Officer Science and Haddon, reported to the scene, left the scene, closed out, and then another call was made to come to 849 South Broadway? Um, yes. What did you see? The second call created was the one that we had received. And it says, at, at, this is 2209, which would be 1009, right, roughly? Yes. It says, teletype from NYPD ICAP. Female stated she was on the phone with her friend. She began screaming at her husband. Subject, Amber Heard, husband, Johnny Heard, male, 53 years old, 511, NFD, NFI. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. But that's New York Police Department, and back here, it says New York Police Department, correct? Correct. Okay. But after you communicated down here, <clears throat> on the administrative text messages, and I'm now on uh, LAPD 11, this is 2222. You now know it's the same incident as yours and 1A1 handled earlier. Doubt she called back, probably just delayed response, correct? Yeah, this is just a message from another unit. So, I mean, uh, just because they're telling, they're basically just sending me a message that it's related. You know, it, it doesn't mean that it's exactly the same call. By the time you showed up at the door of Penthouse 3 at the Eastern Columbia building, you already knew that Officer Signs had handled this call and you were just double checking to make sure that the perpetrator wasn't there and that everybody was okay, correct? I was aware that Officer Signs had handled a call at that location earlier, but it doesn't mean that I have to that I treat it as if it's handled already 
We still have to get there and speak to them and make that determination what, that it's not a completely new incident. Okay. And you did that, right? Yes. And you put in the system for this call. Twenty-one twenty twenty forty-six to twenty-one twenty-two. Met with Vic, checked location, verified husband left location, victim advised verbal dispute and refused to give any further information. Actually that was Hadman signs, right? That wasn't me. I didn't put that in. And then what you put in, that was why I couldn't find it. You put in twenty-two seventeen, and I'm sure you weren't there till three oh one, but we talked to after some dates about that. You put in related to previous incident, verbal argument only, check residence, correct? Yes. Okay. And your putting verbal argument only was based on what you had reviewed with science and hadn't, correct? Uh, yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as defendant's exhibit number two, uh, and it's a picture, it's a portion of a video clip from the ECB building. And it has 521 2016, and the time is 22 28 14. Uh, do you recognize the person in this picture? Yes. And who, who is in this picture? Uh, Officer Deer. I'm going to ask you to take a look at Defendant's Exhibit Number Three, and that's uh, reflecting a video clip again. And it's dated 521 2016 and says 22 28 15. Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Deaner. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Deaner. So I'm going to go through and show those to you. Come in and make sure that everybody's okay. 
Yeah, and they're all good? Nobody yeah. else was in here? No. Okay. The, the other officers came by and checked the apartment and the other apartment as well. Yeah, okay. It must have been like a double call. Okay. Who's Amber? Okay. And Johnny? Is definitely not here. Is not here? Okay. Left oh. probably like two hours ago. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Everything's all good then? No, it's good. Alright. Thank you. Well, if you guys need anything else, just call us back. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, officers. Yep, thank you very much. So this one is, the, is uh, defendant's exhibit number four. Coffee's hot. Burn it up. We're in round 10 down three. <laughs> Before we go further, can you two uh, show you now the, you're putting verb team and says 22, 28, 15. Um, do you recognize the person in this? Yeah, that's me and Officer Diener. I'm going to uh, show you now the video cam footage. I've got the two uh, from yours and from Officer Diener. So I'm going to go through and show those to you as well. Okay. Have. So this one is, the, is uh, defendant's exhibit number four. Coffee's hot. Burn it up. further can you tell whether this one is your video cam footage or it is officer Diener's? uh this appears to be officer Diener's. and so that's you over here yes can you tell whether it's you or officer Diener that's saying officer signs mm, i cannot tell okay how did you know that it was officer signs who'd been there uh, because i was aware which unit had responded to the call there and i knew that she was working that unit I don't know if it's related to the same call from earlier or if somebody called again. Probably. So we just did the check. Do you know someone in New York or something? Yeah, she probably called twice. Okay. Yeah. Can uh, you just talk to your wife and make sure it's not my phone? Oh, okay. We'll Different whoever. conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, whoever it is, you know, we just got to check on and make sure it's up there all good. I, I'll go get the business card from the cops. She's. Yeah, I don't know. Just because we got another call and we came again, we still got to make sure. One second. So, now, would you say, and this is, I'll represent this as Josh Drew, and he's already provided testimony. Would you say that Josh Drew was discouraging you from even coming into the apartment uh, or seeing Amber Heard? Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if she called twice or, or whoever called, but we just got another notification. So. We just need to come in and make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah, okay. They're all good. Nobody else is in here. No. Okay. The the other officers came by. All right, Officer Gatlin, can you tell which one of these people is doing the talking of these three girls, women? Uh, I can't tell for certain, but it, a, it appears to me it's the girl in the middle. That's the uh, one that's leaning forward with the white shirt. Do you know which one of these is Amber Heard? Um, from this view, I can't tell. All right. Do you know what color hair the person that's the most forward that's in the middle has? Uh, I can't tell from this. 
Okay. Can you tell what color hair the woman, the furthest right is? It's in front. I can't tell. It looks like her head is in a shadow. Okay. Can you tell what color hair the person that's uh, middle but in the back? No, same. Everything looks like they're, the tops of their heads are in shadows. All right. And you believe that the one to the left is Amber Heard? Um, no, I, I believe that that's the one that's doing most of the talking. I can check the right end and the other part as well. Yeah, okay. You might have to get like a double call. Okay. Who's Amber? Okay. Johnny is... Did you see anybody acknowledge that they identify themselves as Amber? Uh, it looks like it was the girl sitting furthest away from me, or furthest away from the camera. Okay. And how would you describe the lighting in there? Uh, pretty dim and uh, dark. You said earlier you thought you were 10 to 15 feet away. How much would you estimate now that you are looking at this on body cam? How far away are you from the three women? Uh, I would still say it's in that range. Did you get a clear look? at any of these three women? Um, I can't remember. And did you ask to have any of them come out into the lighting so that you could take a better look at them to see if potentially they might have injuries? No. What perception did you have about the level of cooperation of these four individuals with your answer in this call? Uh, pretty uh, low level of cooperation. Okay. Now can we uh, bring up uh, exhibit number five? It's the other video. I just want to run through both of them because there's a little bit of a different angle in the two.
Now showing you de defendant's exhibit number five. And let me just stop you for a minute. Does this appear to be the video cam from your video cam? Uh, yes. Just stopping here again um, on these three women. Uh, you had indicated before the woman that's leaning forward here that she's in the middle. Is that correct? Uh, it appears that way. And you think she's the one who did most of the talking, correct? Uh, yeah, right now she was the one talking. Okay. And you believe that Amber is the one in the back behind her? Yes. Um, are you able to see the right side of Amber's face? From this camera view, it looks like she's kind of facing uh, straight towards me. So uh, I would have been able to see the right side of her face from there. Would you have been able to see it clearly? Uh, due to the low lighting, probably not very clearly. Okay. Johnny is definitely not here. He's not here? Okay. Probably like two hours. 
while we're still there, can you tell how much hair Amber has covering the right side of her face to you pictures? Uh, no, it looks like uh, from this camera view, most of the time, like half of her head is blocked from the uh, woman in front of her. Can you tell whether she's wearing any makeup? No. Everything about good then? All right. Well, if you guys need anything else, just call us back. Have a good night. Do you recall looking for any injuries in the faces of the three women? Um, no. Now, uh, Officer Gatlin, do you recall seeing two dogs in the house? Yes. They were running around pretty freely? Yes. And when you say that, would you be able to, sitting here today, say that the person in these three photos, defendants seven, eight, and nine, is the same person that was sitting on that sofa in the back? Are you able to draw that connection? Um, no, I don't recall. Do you... Do you disagree with my description of what's in this picture? No, I was stating that I didn't observe that when I was inside the apartment. Are you able to testify whether Amber Heard was the victim of domestic violence by Mr. Depp on May 21, 2016? Uh, based on our investigation, it appeared as if she was not. Your investigation of what? Based on her refusing to give uh, any statement on what had occurred. And uh, at the time, we did not observe any, <clears throat> any visible or verifiable injuries to her. Anything else? Not that I can recall. Right. So did you interview any of the three other individuals in the apartment? No. Did you ask any of the individuals to give you a statement about what transpired? I believe the female that was sitting in the middle of the three uh, told us that everything was fine and that the other officers had already uh, conducted an investigation on the incident prior to our arrival. Did you ask that individual to give you a statement? Outside of that, no. Did you take that individual aside and try to interview her without the others present? No. Why not? Uh, as I just stated, uh, everybody there had told us that the uh, officers who had responded a couple hours before us had conducted the investigation, and this is... Uh, our call is still stemming from that incident, and there's been there have been no change in the circumstance since then. Do you know whether Officer Science and Officer Haddon took any of the individuals aside and interviewed them? No. Did you at any point uh, ask Amber Heard to come forward and examine her in the light to see if she had any injuries? No. Did you? take a flashlight just to see if she had any visible injuries to her face or her body? No. Did you ask Amber Heard if she had any injuries? No. I'm asking whether you're in a position as a police officer to testify under oath that Johnny Depp did not commit any abuse of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016. I don't believe I'm in the position to testify whether he did or did not because I was not there when the incident potentially occurred. Okay. A and you didn't conduct your own independent investigation, correct? Outside of the female telling us that everything was fine and uh, the male that answered the door, that uh, told us that the other officers had already came and talked to everybody and uh, 
she told us they checked the both the two apartments. So I felt at that time sufficient that, as I stated, there's uh, no change in the circumstance from the previous call. So we did not go further into investigation. And that's the extent of your investigation, correct? Correct. Did you do that that night on May 21, 2016? Did you do anything other than what we have looked at on the video camera in connection with investigating whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence with Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No. Do you know whether Johnny Depp committed domestic violence of Amber Heard on May 21, 2016? No. Sorry, your next witness, uh, Alejandro Romero. Alejandro Romero. And if I might, Your Honor, um, this is another one that begins with questioning by counsel for Ms. Hurd and later on switches uh, to questioning by counsel for Mr. Depp. Okay, thank you. Romero, will you please state your name and address for the record? My name, <clears throat> sorry, my name is Alejandro Romero. I go by Alex. What is your current occupation? I work on the front desk of the Eastern Columbia building. And is that for the Action Property Management Company? That's correct. How long have you been employed at the Eastern Columbia building? Approximately 13 years. And could you please describe what kind of work you do for? the Eastern Columbia building? Most of it is just access control and I uh, deal with a lot of uh, residents uh, regarding their packages and uh, food deliveries. Okay. And have you done that pretty much the whole 10 years? That's correct. I'm going to take you back to 2015 and 2016 for a moment. How many okay. people, how many people would you say would go through the building on any particular day in that time. We're talking uh, about tenants and visitors. I cannot say a number because uh, there's there's 147 units in the building, and there's uh, there are visitors, uh, guests, friends. Uh, uh, actually, we used to send delivery people out. We don't send it anymore because of the COVID. Uh, but I cannot tell you a number. There's thousands of people probably. Have you ever met Johnny Depp? I saw him a couple of times. Okay. Do you remember what Mr. Depp was wearing on any of those occasions? Nope. Do you remember what jewelry he had on? Nope. Do you remember what headgear he was wearing? He was wearing a scarf or a hat. And no. Do you remember whether Mr. Depp was wearing any makeup or eyeliner? On the no, time? I don't remember. No. Nope. You couldn't tell me one way or the other, right? No. Um, do you know whether Mr. Depp has had ever been physically violent with Amber Heard? And by this, I mean hitting, punching, throwing objects at her, kicking her, headbutting her. Do you know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp ever did that to Ms. Heard? Nope. Do you ever seen Mr. Depp uh, slam things around or be angry? No, I have never seen him like that. I'm going to ask you some questions now about Amber Heard. When did you first meet Amber Heard? Um, I believe uh, uh, she was dancing on the lobby. I met her at the front desk. I got into like more with uh, her sister, Whitney, I believe her, that's her name. And uh, her good friend, uh, Raquel, Rocky. And, uh, but Amber, I only see her like once in a while when she was, uh, sometimes used to get packages. Do you recall whether Ms. Heard became a resident sometime around March 2016? Don't remember. Could you tell me one way or the other? 
I just can't remember. Like I said, it's been so long. I just don't remember. And like, I know you guys sent me the papers to review, and I'm gonna be honest. I don't didn't want to review them because it's been so long. It's like I uh, just don't want to deal with this anymore. Yes, I went through the witness statement, and it's everything that is written there. That's what I said. Okay. That was correct. It was that was accurate. Okay. That's why I signed it. So during the time between 2015 and 2016, how many times would you say total that you interacted with Amber Heard? For a whole year, I, I don't I can give you a number. Because it could be like probably I'll see, I probably saw Amber for uh, three times in one day, probably I'll see like five times, or probably I will never see him for a whole week. So I don't have like, there's not never been a routine. Okay. How would you describe Amber Heard's interactions with you? Were they friendly? Would she smile at you? Would she talk with you? She was really friendly. She always smiled. And, but she, we never had like a, like a uh, interaction as a, as, as really close relationship. Like, uh, like I do with some of the other residents. She okay. never told me any of her problems. She never stopped by and talk about her personal life. She never did that. They're asking you about uh, a date that you recall seeing Amber Heard on May 25th, 2016. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And you said, probably, I just can't remember the days. I've got a really bad memory for dates. Did you see that? Yep. So, Mr. Romero, would you at any time be able to remember what type of clothing Amber Heard was wearing from one of her events? Nope, I don't remember. Um, would you remember on any daily basis uh, what type of hairstyle she was wearing? Nope. Would you remember on any type of basis uh, what type of uh, uh, bag she was Amber Heard was carrying? No. Would you be able to say uh, whether she Amber Heard was dressed up or casual on any given day? No. Would you be able to uh, say whether she was what type of makeup Amber Heard was wearing on any given day? No. Would you be able to say, for example, whether Amber Heard had on concealer or foundation on any given day? No. Would you be able to say whether Amber Heard had on blush or powder on any given day? No. Would you be able to say whether Amber Heard had a mascara or eyeliner on any given day? No. How about eyebrow pencil or lip pencil? No. Do you have any mem memories of Amber Heard uh, wearing a particular type of makeup with a type of outfit? No. If you were asked uh, to describe uh, any characteristics of Amber Heard from two days earlier without knowing you were going to be asked, would you be able to testify yeah. to any of those, what she was wearing, what her makeup was, what her hairstyle was? No, I won't, probably won't remember. When is the first time that you recall anyone saying anything to you about the police being called at the EC building because of a domestic dispute between Mr. Depp and Amber Heard? Well, uh, to answer your question, whatever happened, it happened on a Saturday. I don't work Saturday. When I got there on Monday, they asked me, oh, you heard what happened? And I said, no, what happened? So that's how I find out. Okay. Then I, I went to the, I went to the cameras and see what what was what was going on. And as soon as I saw Johnny Depp on the camera on the elevator, just walking back and forward on the camera in the elevator, I said, "Okay, I know that was him, and that's all I knew." But I was never I was never I was not there on that Saturday when that happened. I think I believe that 
that whatever they happened, they say it happened. And when they called the police, I believe it was a, it was on a Saturday, and I was not there. Okay. Do you recall who told you that on that Monday following the Saturday? Okay, Don, as a matter of fact, I think it was one of the residents that they approached to me and they said uh, there was a lot of noise because the person was working out on the gym that's next to the penthouse. They heard a bunch of noise and that's it. And I, that's why I checked the camera and said, and when I looked at the cameras and I saw Johnny, like I said, was just walking back and forward in the elevator. And I said like, okay, all right, okay, no, I, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. And I didn't say anything more. I turned off the camera, and that's it. So the first part of that, who somebody was working out and heard noise. Someone was working out on the gym, and heard the noise. They heard some, uh, a lot of noise in the hallway, because it's really rare to hear anything. Because most of the time, uh, the penthouse level is is really quiet. Okay. Do you remember who the person was in the gym that heard a lot of noise in the penthouse that night? That's correct. I do remember the person. Who is it? Uh, I remember the person. It has been a resident in the building for a long time. I just don't remember. I don't remember her name. And where is the gym in comparison to the penthouse? that's owned by Mr. Depp. Like I said, Johnny Depp owns all the penthouse on the, on the below the clock. The gym is sick. The gym of the Eastern Columbia building is just in front of one of the penthouses. You actually can see it through the window. You can see the gym through a window of the penthouse or you can see the penthouse through a window of the gym? You can see the, the gym through one of the windows to the penthouse. And they have the patio that leads to the gym. Then I was the patio to lead to the gym. Okay. And this tenant, if you, if you think of her name while you're, you know, even if we're asking other questions, please let me know. This, this tenant, this is a resident there, right? That, that saw this? Yeah, I believe her name is uh, Shana. And, and so she told you she heard a lot of noise. That's correct. Did she describe anything, uh, voices, uh, any objects, anything like that? No, she just said it was a noise. As a matter of just noise. And uh, she was just surprised because, like I said, it's always really quiet. Okay. And so she wanted to know what happened. And so you went to the video cameras to look at video. How did you know when to look for them? Because she got the time, she got the time that she was working out. That's why I, I, I figured out the track, the, the time on the camera, and looked. And then when I saw, as soon as I saw, like I said, Johnny Depp walking back and forth in the elevator, I turned off the camera, and I figured out, okay, this is what happened. I figured out if we wanted to together, so I said, okay. When you said you figured out what happened after you saw Johnny Depp in the elevator, what did you figure out had happened? I figured out that was that was that, that's why they called the cops, the police. Because why? Because of the because of the noise that was on the penthouse level. Mr. Romero, I'm going to ask you to look at this is a video clip uh, marked as Romero Exhibit Number Eight.
it shows a date and time stamp near the bottom. Do you recognize this as the elevator at ECB building? That's correct. Mr. Romero, you're nodding. Is this the video that you remember looking at after Shauna told you that she heard the noise that night? That's correct. And that's Mr. Depp? Correct. Do you recognize the other two men in the elevator? I recognize uh, the guy in front of the elevator button. That's his uh, personal bodyguard. The other guy, uh, I've seen him before, but uh, I never interact with him. If I did, I don't remember. You said he looked he agitated? Tried. Yeah, he looked agitated. Like, he was walking back and forward. He took out his jacket. His body language is it was uh, different of, uh, than before. Most of the time, he's really calm. He's just like really happy person. Yeah, like this is the first time I saw him like that. And then you go to the next. So then you say Wednesday, May twenty fifth, at approximately ten thirty, Ms. Heard walked into the lobby accompanied by Ms. Raquel Pennington. That's the person you called Rocky earlier. Do you remember her? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And you said that Ms. Heard approached you to ask you for the key to her unit, which you gave. Her. And you said we did not discuss anything else at that time. Correct. And Ms. Heard stood approximately three feet away from you. I did not notice any bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind on Ms. Heard's face. Do you see that? Correct. Okay. But you weren't looking for bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries on Ms. Hurd's face that night, were you? I was not looking for any marks or bruises or anything. Uh, but it's something like that it will be really noticeable. But I guess, you know, I was not looking. I was more focusing on what my job duties was, like getting the key. And also, this I gave him the key, and they were talking about. I told her, you know what, your dog. I was talking with Raquel because her dog got out of her unit, and that was one of, one of my concerns. I would tell her, you know what, I saw your dog was outside. He didn't want me to get get too close to it, so it's still out there, you know, on the penthouse area. That dog will be fine because it's not like I said. It's always really quiet. And Mr. Depp owned everything up there, so it'll be fine. So that was one of my concerns. That was my job, and I was just taking care of that. I was not trying to say, oh, let me see your face. No. So, and that's where I'm going to follow up. Do you remember what Ms. Heard was wearing that night? No. Do you remember whether she was dressed up? No. Do you remember where she was coming from that she was coming home at 10.30 at night with Ms. Penny? No, I don't remember. They didn't mention to me. She was actually, she was on the phone. She was with Raquel in front of me. We were talking about it, and then she left to the lobby where she was still on the phone. So I, was focusing, I was focusing more on Raquel because she, they want, I was telling about her dog. Okay. Do you remember what hairstyle Ms. Heard had that night? No. Do you know what type of makeup Amber Heard was wearing that night? No. Can you tell me whether she was wearing concealer or foundation? No. Could you tell me whether she was wearing blush? No. Could you tell me whether she was wearing any type of, any kind of eye makeup? No. So who wrote the sentence, I did not notice any bruises, cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind in this bird's face. I'm pretty sure if I would have said something like that, I would have said something. Mr. Romero, I, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't saw any marks or bruises on her face. I don't just don't recall. Just don't saw anything. She was just standing in front of me. I'm asking specifically, I did not notice any bruises cuts, swelling, red marks, or any other injuries of any kind to Ms. Heard's face. Who wrote that's that? What, that's what I said. I didn't saw any marks or bruises on her face. That's what I said. 
But so they it, ask, they ask me, they ask me if I remember seeing anything. I said, I just don't recall seeing any marks of bruises because she was just sitting in front of me. I just don't remember any, seeing anything. I just don't remember. If it, how it would have been so obvious, like someone had like a black eye, I would have like, whoa, you know, I would have seen that. And I would have remembered because it's something that you will, you will see. You know, like so noticeable, like you will, oh, like you will remember. But I, when I was there talking to her, she was like three feet away from me. She was right in front of me. I just don't remember seeing any marks, bruises, or anything. But you don't know whether she was wearing makeup to cover it, do you? No, I don't know. I, I, she was wearing any makeup to cover it, probably. You know, the, the probably would you would probably will cover any bruise, but you cannot cover the swelling. Were you looking for swelling? No, I can say I was not looking for anything. In fact, you were spending more time talking to Rocky about her dog, were you not? That's, that's correct, but I got I got a habit of uh, when I'm talking to someone, I look into their eyes. And when I was talking to uh, Amber and Rocky, I always look into their eyes. Okay. And I will probably wouldn't notice like any swollen or bruise, like I said, I would probably would notice. It's fair to say, Mr. Romero, that you can't say that Amber Heard had injuries or did not have injuries that day on the 25th? I don't remember. Okay. And like I said, I would probably remember the swollen, but I didn't saw anything. I don't re just don't remember. And you don't remember seeing anything, right? But do you remember even looking? I remember. Okay. I remember. I re okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I remember. I got to tell the whole story, how they got there. Before they got it, they went and get the keys. They come down. They say, somebody tried to get into my unit. They scratches on my door and say, and like, um, um, I'm really sorry, but who will think it's gonna get into your unit because they saw some scratches on the door, like, what, four inches above the door? Because the dog was scratching the door, was trying to get in, and they thought about someone trying to break into the, the, the unit. I said, on oh, my head, I was like, you really, you think someone's trying to get into your unit? There's scratches like four inches above your the floor and your door. That was the dog trying to get into the unit. They were so afraid. Oh, somebody's trying to get into my unit. They're like, oh, come on, really? And I actually, when they asked me to go inside the unit just to check room by room to make sure that no one was there. So I did that as part of my job, make sure they're safe, but I like really, I didn't understand why they want me to do that. Like, oh, I don't know. Okay. I, I just so stressed out because of this. I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this court case. I, everybody got problems and I don't want to deal with this no more. Okay. I don't know how to. I don't want to put this in any more words. The interaction you just testified about is Amber Heard and Rocky Pennington and talking about the dog and going up and checking out the penthouse. None of that was on video footage, correct? That's correct. We don't have cameras in the video. I'm mean, sorry, we don't have cameras at the hallway. We okay. don't have cameras on the hallway. I'm going to show you uh, what has been marked as Romero De exhibit number one is a deposition that you was taken of you on July 19, 2016. Now that's approximately two months after the May 21, 2016 incident. Um, and I, do you recall giving that deposition? 16 probably I did, I just don't remember. Okay. I'm going to take you to page 35. I've got a little bit 
When you were asked, this is the same incident that you're talking about now, okay? And it's talking about, okay, you spoke with Amber at the front desk, later saw her in the lobby, later went upstairs with her. It says the question at line six, I just want to go back for a second here. You said several times in answer to my questions that you didn't recall seeing any marks on Amber's face. When you say you didn't recall seeing any of those marks, any marks, did you mean that you didn't see any marks on her face? And your answer then was, I say that because when I saw Amber, I was not looking to see anything on her face. I was not looking to see anything. Do you recall giving that testimony on the under oath back at that time, two months after the incident? Yes, I, do, I remember. Because like I said, I was, I always make eye contact with someone I'm talking to, but I'm not looking to find something like, like, oh, your makeup is wrong, uh, you, you haven't uh, have changed your eyebrows, or your uh, eyelashes are not even, or I'm not looking for anything. I'm just looking at their eyes, and I'm, looking, I'm not looking for anything else. But if I see something, I will re probably will remember. If you saw something, right? Yeah, I, I would have probably would see, like, if she had a swollen, like if she was wearing makeup, probably would have been seen the swollen. I probably would remember that. But I was not looking for anything. I was like, oh, you know. How, how swollen was Amber on the 25th of May? How swollen was her cheek? Well, then? according to the pictures you, you, I've been seeing right now that you're showing me, it was pretty swollen. I would probably would remember that. How many days later did you see her from that swelling? That was on a Wednesday. That was from Saturday to Wednesday. Right. How many right. days would it be fair to say that you cannot testify one way or the other whether Amber Heard was domestically abused by Johnny Depp on May 21, 2016? I, can, I cannot say that. I would, not, I would not agree to testify against anyone of domestic violence because I was not there. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I was not there. I was never there. I was probably hundreds of miles away and got no idea what happened that day. And do you remember that there was pictures of wine, a glass of wine and bottle of wine, wine stains on the floor outside of the, uh, in the hallway of the penthouse from May 21st, 2016? I remember telling the mark. I'm not going to say it was wine. All right. Well, it, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert. Ladies and gentlemen, the next portion of this deposition contains questions asked by counsel for Mr. Depp. You sit here today, when you saw her at the front desk on March 25th, you didn't see any bruising, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see um, uh, that correct? That's correct. I didn't see any marks or bruises. You didn't see any swelling either, did you, Mr. Romero? That's correct. No swelling and she at was all. Only, and she was only three or four feet away from you, correct? Correct. And you were looking right into her face squarely, correct? Correct. And the lighting was good at the front desk, correct? Jackson, correct. It was so good that had she had any bruises, swelling, or marks on her face, you would have noticed that, correct? That's correct. And then later that, later that same day, and you testified to this already today, later that same day, you went up the elevator with Ms. Hurd and Ms. Pennington uh, in connection with their request for you to check the penthouse, correct? That's correct. And during that entire uh, period of time, taking them up to the penthouse, walking through the penthouse, and then finally you leaving and going back to your desk, uh, you did not, you looked, you looked at Ms. Hurd during that time period, correct? That's correct. And you looked her in the face, squarely in the face, correct? Correct. And you didn't notice any swelling, correct? Correct. 
I'm sorry? Correct. Um, I didn't saw you. anything. Did, did you see, did you see any swelling? Injection. No. Did you see any bruises? No. Nope. Did you see any marks on the face of any kind? No marks at all. And again, just to repeat, when you were, previously, when you were confronted, I can report the face. Did you see any uh, swelling on her face? No. Nope. See any bruises on her? No. Nope. Did, did you see any marks of any kind on her face? No marks at all. And how was the light down when you were at the reception and you were looking at her and didn't see any of this? How was the lighting? The lighting is actually pretty pretty good. It's not, it's not dark apart? at all. She was three feet away? apart. Approximately three, three, to, three to four feet apart. Were you looking her square in the face? Correct. Okay. And when you were up in the penthouse and you uh, were looking her square in the face, how far apart were you from her then? We yeah. actually were, were pretty close to each other. Uh, she was probably next, just next to me. She, she was telling me like, go into this uh, this um, this room, so I need to pass right in front of her. And do you recall seeing? Any bruises, swelling, redness, or any marks on Miss Hurd's face on May 24th, 2016? I don't see anything. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, the remainder of this deposition of this witness uh, contains questions by counsel for Ms. Hurd. I'm going to talk a little bit about the video clips that Mr. Depp's attorney showed you. Um, I'm going to ask you, first of all, Mr. Mr. Presidio showed you a number of video clips from May 24th. Do you recall that? May 24th? Yes. Yep, no, it's Tuesday. But in fact, you don't recall seeing Amber Heard on May 24th, correct? It's, I don't remember. I don't even remember what I got for breakfast. Okay. Well, let's pull up exhibit number one. Let's stay on page 17. That's a good place. Um, mm -hmm. and this is your deposition from July 19, 2016. Do you recall that? 19? Yeah. Okay. And that's... That was three in the morning. Okay. And it said here... Uh, did you work, so Saturday was the 21st. Did you work that day? No. Did you work Sunday, May 22nd? No. Did you work May 23rd? Yes. On May 23rd while you were working, did you see Amber at any time? I don't recall seeing her. Question, did you work on Tuesday, May 24th? Yes, I did. And, and on Tuesday, May 24th, at any time, did you see Amber? I don't recall seeing her. Do you remember that being your testimony two months after the events? No. Yeah. Okay. I just don't recall. I just don't remember. Okay. Um, and then I, while we're here, now, Mr. Uh, Presidio had you go through a number of video clips and ask you a bunch of questions about whether you saw swelling, whether you saw red marks, whether you saw all kinds of other things. Um, but in fact, um, I'm going to ask you and tell me if you need me to bring up the videos and replay them. Can you tell me what type of of makeup Amber Heard was wearing in any of those videos? No, I can't, I can't tell you. Can you I tell didn't me, even know she was wearing any lipstick. Can you tell I don't know. me? Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing concealer in any of those videos? Uh, no. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any foundation in any of those videos? No, I can can't tell you. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any blush in any of those videos? No. Can you tell me whether Amber Heard was wearing any powder on, in any of those videos? No, no, but she looks really pale. Well, do you know what shade of concealer or foundation or powder Ms. Heard uses or used at that no. time? No. Okay. 
So you don't know whether Ms. Hurd was wearing makeup in every one of those video clips, correct? Correct. I want to try to move along. So the incident was May 21st, 2016. You saw her the night of May 25th, correct? Correct. You said you saw Amber Hurd hundreds of times while she was there. Amber Heard treat you well and was she friendly to you in each of these hundreds of times? Yes, yes. I, I'm not going to say no because she was really always nice. All right, this I, is my last question. Be nice. All right, this is my last question. You testified in response to Mr. Presidio's questions um, that you testified truthfully in all of these occasions. Did you testify truthfully, truthfully to everything that you testified in response to my questions today? That's correct. Uh, All right. I, I did. All right. It's a good time to break for lunch. Uh, we'll just break a little early, so just don't talk to anybody. Don't do any outside research, and we'll see you at 2 o'clock, okay? Thank you. That was a first. I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will say, Your Honor, that is the most bizarre episode. Okay. All right. It's, it's, see, I've just never seen that before. You I've started, seen a lot of things, but I've just never seen that. driving that. Yeah, that did it. All right. So um, we will come back at 2. Uh, is there anything preliminary before we get to the next deposition? We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, You'll we'll, work we'll, through them, and then if I come back at 2, we should be able to take care of it pretty quickly? Yes. yes okay. Sure. All right. Great. We'll come back at 2 then. Thank you.